This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at emerging architectures for LLM applications. So this is an article from Anderson Horowitz by Matt and Rajko. Uh, so they discussed uh, this, you know, from uh, with various AI startup founders and engineers. So this work is based on conversations with AI startup founders and engineers. So how does this text stack look like? Okay, so this is the emerging LLM app stack. So you have contextual data. So this is based on in-context learning pipeline. So what is in-context learning pipeline? So the idea here is that you have lot of documents, right? You wouldn't want to send them directly to a large language model like a chat GPT or GPT-4 because of context window limitations and other things, right? So the idea is that you have data pipelines to work on this particular con data, right? And then you make use of some embedding models to chunk this data. Uh, you know, data is chunked. You use embedding models to get embeddings for this data or vectors for to this data. And then you store those vectors in a vector database, right? Now your data pipelines could make use of technologies like Databricks, Airflow, or it could be custom, right? And embeddings are again, open AI embeddings. They could be Cohere embeddings. They could be uh, hugging face embeddings, right? Hugging face models. So there could be embeddings from different uh, embedding models, right? Again, in your vector database, you can have Pinecone, VV8, Chroma, PG vector, these kind of various vector databases. So now you have your data vectorized and you have, you have those data stored in vector databases, right? Now, uh, what is the next thing which needs to be done? There has to be an orchestration component, right? So what does this orchestration component do? It is actually constructing your prompts. Now, uh, you can have prompts with few short examples where you explain the prompt and you also explain what kind of output needs to be generated, right? Basically, you create a prompt. And this can be created on various playgrounds like OpenAI, Net.dev, or Human Loop, right? Once you create these few short prompt examples, so the orchestration layer would then, you know, based on a query from the user, it would actually try to retrieve the context from these vector databases. For example, you want to ask a particular question on a document, it will actually try to find out which, uh, you know, among the set of documents, which document is more relevant to this particular question using these vector databases. Or context can also be provided by different APIs or plugins. Like in chat GPT, you have these plugins which can provide you information like weather, a lot of different kind of information, right? So you have these plugins or third party APIs, right? So that is what is this orchestration layer. It takes that data, constructs your prompt based on your input query, Along with the prompt, it also takes this context data and then it will send into your LLMs or large language models and get the output back and then, uh, you know, send the output to the front end, right? Now your uh, front end apps can be hosted on Streamlit or Vercel, Streamship, different technologies, right? It can be also React or whatever technologies over here for the front end, okay? Now for your again LLM APIs and hosting, your LLM APIs could be proprietary like OpenAI or Anthropic. They could be open source APIs from Hugging Face, Replicate, your uh, other open um, API providers. It could be also from cloud providers like AWS, GCP, Google Cloud, Azure, CoreWeave, or it could be also other crowds, uh, other uh, clouds like Databricks, Mosaic, uh, you know, there are different other platforms over here, okay? So here, if you see, there is something called an LLM cache where you have technologies like Redix. So what is this LLM cache? So when you have queries coming, which are very similar, okay, or the same query getting asked again and again from different users, then you need not every time hit your uh, LLM API to get the output, right? If the outputs are already present in a cache, you can retrieve it. So that is the idea of this LLM cache. Then you have various logging and LLM ops, um, you know, tools like weights and biases, ML flow. So this is basically for logging the operations of uh, like uh, the outputs of LLM APIs, you know, how are the responses and other things over here, right? Then you also have validation uh, technologies like card rails. So basically they look at prompt injection attacks and other things to see how your LLM outputs are 
performing okay so this is your emerging llm app stack right if you want to develop end to end use cases as an enterprise or as even a developer you know this is a kind of uh, landscape or architecture you are looking at uh, implementing using the various components so you have choices at every level with respect to embedding models or pipelines or vector databases you know cost um, choices uh, on choosing llm apis again based on cost based on whether you want to host your own api over here your own llm right uh, so there are different factors in choosing components of this architecture but the idea is that most of the apps will kind of follow this particular architecture when you are developing end to end use cases with large language models okay further details are present over here in this particular blog you can read over it right i just kind of uh, you know covered the highlights or what i felt was important in this particular diagram with respect to these components okay so i'll be putting the link of this blog in the description of the video i hope you find this video on emerging llm app stack useful for you if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video